Hello, Chart Watchers and Decision Point faithful. Welcome to this Monday, December 9th, Decision Point show with your hosts, Carl and Aaron Swenlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, we do welcome you to the show and hope you will become part of the Decision Point faithful. And of course, to those faithful, we welcome you back. It uh, looks like it's going to be a pretty interesting show today. So how are you doing, uh, Dad? I'm doing great. I'm just contemplating talking about Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll save that for later. Or do you want to talk about that now? <laughs> no, that's all right. We'll do it later. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and oh, let's go ahead and take a look at this agenda. What we're going to cover today. Of course, I I will go over that decision point scoreboard for you. Uh, we'll look at the sector scoreboard and as a special treat. We're put, we've put together a new chart list. I'm going to get that added to our chart packs uh, probably later today or certainly by the end of the week. And then we have the DP indicators and big four. Carl will cover the S&P 500 and the accompanying indicators. And then we'll look at, as I said, the big four, meaning dollar, gold, oil, and bonds. And as our bonus, uh, we will talk to Carl and look at his grab bag and the things that are interesting to him right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get it started with our decision point scoreboard review. Uh, as you can see, everything's looking pretty good. We've got uh, momentum has slowed though, and in the process of doing that, you can see on December 2nd and 3rd, we got new PMO cell signals, the price momentum oscillator. So momentum is uh, looking pretty weak at this point for those major indexes. Uh, but the intermediate term is still hanging in there. We are on November 1st uh, buy signals for the weekly PMOs. And of course, the trend is overall moving higher as our short term, midterm, and long term trend models are all on buy signals. The decision point scoreboard currently is looking fairly green, with the exceptions being a neutral signal on XLRE and that long-term sell signal on XLE, the energy uh, sector. And this sell signal is generated because the 50-day EMA is below the 200-day EMA. So that's the only sector where that is true, and that's why we have a sell signal. And then the 20-day EMA dropped below the 50-day EMA on real estate sector. So we went into a neutral signal mainly because the 50 is above the 200. So rather than go into a full sell signal, we choose to go to neutral, which as it says here is a soft sell signal uh, where we're positioned uh, ourselves in cash or you're fully hedged as far as the real estate sector goes. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some charts. Since I just talked sectors, uh, I would like to go and uh, look at that first. So let me go get that for us if I can get my Hmm, interesting. I'm going to do it this way. And then I can sneak on over there. Okay, here we are. All right. So this is that new sector chart list, and it's really comprehensive. Uh, I'm going to start with XLE because we did note that we're on that sell signal. And you can see we've been on that sell signal all year because that 50 day EMA has been below the 200 day EMA. Now, all of the uh, various indicators we have added onto this chart, I think, are fabulous. Of course, we have our PMO and OBV, which we always put on our uh, daily charts. And then we've added the indicators. So we have that new Silver Cross Index and the new Golden Cross Index. And of course, the Silver, Silver Cross Index measures all the components, in this case, XLE, and determines how many of them are on intermediate term trend model buy signals. And that means that the 20 day EMAs are above the 50 day EMAs. So that tells us right now that as far as energy is concerned, less than 40% are on um, intermediate term trend model buy signals. So certainly uh, not uh, looking too healthy in the intermediate and certainly not in the long term. When you look at the Golden Cross Index here, it is only uh, at 28.57. So we're looking at less than 29% of the members uh, of XLE that are on long-term trend model buy signals or a Golden Cross where the 50 is above the 200-day EMA. And then, of course, I have added the scooter in here 
as well. Uh, I will talk about what the scooter is in just a moment. Uh, actually, I'll save it to the end of the show. If we have time, I'll cover it. If not, you can find it in Chart School. Just type in scooter and in the search stock charts, and you can get the um, Chart School article. But I'll talk about it later if we have time. The yeah. other indicators we've added also were the stocks above their 20-day EMA and 50-day EMA in each of those sectors. So as you can see right now, these, these haven't been calculated for the day, but they take uh, a bit longer in the process. So uh, it should be done uh, shortly. And again, this one is not looking too healthy either when you have less than two thirds with uh, the stocks above their 50 and uh, certainly even lower amount that are above their 20 day EMAs. We have highlighted those price highs. So Aaron, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to say, I set these charts up and uh, one of the things I started doing when I was setting these up is, is drawing the uh, vertical line through cardinal price highs. That helps us to see how the uh, indicators are uh, moving in relation to those uh, approaches to the price high and then and then subsequent to the price high. Mainly, we we're expecting we would expect the indicators to, to move higher as prices hit it higher, and then to move lower as as the price is moving lower. So that would just they just confirm one another. What 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 we're what we're looking for is something that stands out that would be as the price moves higher, an indicator is moving lower. You know we don't see that on this particular chart, but it's quite common and uh, something to watch out for. All right. So there's XLE. The other one we were looking at was XLRE. And that one, if you recall, also had uh, that one had the neutral signal. Uh, in the intermediate term. And here's where that happened. You got the 20 day EMA crossing below that 50 day EMA, and it was above, well above actually, the 200 day EMA. So that's why we didn't go into a full sell signal. Um, you know, when the 50 is above the 200, you're usually in a nice uh, upward trend. So it, it doesn't always make sense to go into a full sell signal if you've got your 50 day EMA above the 200 day EMA. Let's see, some of the things I'm noticing on this XLRE chart is a rise, rising bottoms on the PMO, still lower than zero, so it's not uh, what I would call healthy. Uh, you can see that we're getting confirmation uh, from all of these indicators on these uh, price highs. In fact, if I look here in the thumbnail, you can see over here these two highs when we're looking at the um, stocks above their 20 and above their 50. Notice these are declining tops and what was going on with price. Mm, a little bit rising here, but uh, flat in any case. And seeing that, that would tell me there's a negative divergence in play. All right, let's look at utilities because I know that's another one that's kind of close uh, to the brink. Plus it's had some whipsaw going on with the intermediate term trend model. And you can see that better in the thumbnail here, but you can see that I call this a lot of times braiding. Uh, when you, you see the price moving up and down above and below uh, these EMAs like this, uh, it, it just jerks them around up and down. And then you end up seeing these uh, EMAs braiding together and causing all of those whipsaw sell signals. Um, I, I think the, the positive here would be that, that we're not, you know, those, the um, EMAs are moving sideways and we're not seeing them uh, really deteriorating and we are seeing the PMO rising, although it looks like it ticked down, um, let's see, Friday and today. All right. And then as far as the other indicators go, um, you know, I, I like seeing these rising tops, I have to say, on the 20-day EMA. But overall, when you look at the actual numbers here, less than half are above their 50, well, less than half, 43%, and 61% are below their 20-day EMA. So it's it's still looking very weak right now, uh, even though you've seen a little bit of upswing here on I, some of these indicators. I think you read that wrong. Aaron. Did I? Yeah, on the 20 EMA, the 60% or 61% are above 
funny. Right. Okay. Yes. I, I must have said that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Do that often. Not a surprise. Uh, let's look at just a couple of others here. Uh, XLK is one that, uh, you know, really took a big hit. Starting to make its way back up. Of course, we lost a half, a little over half a percent on XLK today. What I would note looking at this is that topping on the silver cross. And notice we have that downswing and the downside negative crossover on the signal line there uh, for the silver cross index. And look at the drop here now, too, going on uh, with the golden cross index. We're seeing some weakness. The good news, though, I have to say, and you can agree with me or not, Dad, but you know we are seeing the uh, stocks above their 20 and 50 still rising, um, despite that that giant decline. So coming okay. out of it, it looks. It just bad. started rising since the decline. That bottom. Uh, I, yeah, I don't I don't think that's too too cool. But the thing is, the Golden Cross Index is still at 81, which is uh, you know. Not as, as 90, but it's certainly um, that shows most of those stocks are still engaged in the up uh, trend, you know. Absolutely. And, you know, we have three quarters a little over with uh, their prices above their 50 day EMA. So still pretty healthy as far as uh, sectors go. All right. Um, we're, we're getting low on not low on time, but I want to pass it to you just to make sure you have uh, plenty of time to talk the details of what you wanted to show. Okie doke. I'm always slower than you when it goes to sharing. I don't know <laughs> but anyway, I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> okay, here, the uh, S&P 500, this is SPY for S&P 500, but <clears throat> up till uh, Thursday, uh, last week, I thought we, we, what we had, we had this breakdown, we had a bounce, and I thought that was going to be the top on Thursday. What happened, of course, is we got a, a really good jobs report, and we had a great big up day that day. But notice the um, volume didn't really follow through on that. And today's volume is um, pulled back, but then, of course, prices pulled back, but uh, <clears throat> I'm not so sure we're not going to get a continuation of this uh, topping action, except now the top's over here. So I think we might get some, uh, see some lower prices. We've hit the lower Bollinger Band. So that's, uh, uh, that marks over sold uh, when we're looking at the, the uh, big scale. Am I in the right? No, I'm not. <laughs> the Golden Cross Index, it has updated and it is headed lower. We have a, a negative divergence across uh, those tops. Uh, still 70% is is not a horrible thing. It's just that it's it certainly has weakened since it was up here at eighty, and uh, uh, that itself is not a good thing. The Golden Cross is still uh, pretty pretty strong. Again, not as good as it was over here. Climax chart. We had some climac climactic action on uh, Friday. You can see um, again, not joined by volume on that. But uh, today, um, we wouldn't expect to see this uh, high challenge, new highs challenge, because on a down day, this should contract, which it did. Short-term indicators, this is the first chance I've had to see them. Uh, they're recovering. Um, 
basically it's just a neutral wrench, but it has acted as uh, overbought, oversold range for these uh, indicators. Uh, bounce up, we're, we're still kind of neutral on that. The uh, intermediate term indicators, negative divergences uh, across the board pretty much. And uh, that is not that is not a good thing to see when the prices are at new highs or near record highs. Yeah. Let me, sh let's see, I wanna get to, yeah, the four. Let's see what we got there. The dollar as expressed by UUP, uh, it's kind of in a range here. Uh, um, not easy, not easy to uh, determine what's going to go next there, or what's likely to happen. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Gold has been acting a little funny. Um, notice that we had two days where where uh, physical gold trust was selling at a premium, which is kind of twitchy, like we're getting to a bottom. The big problem we have with gold is there's still the commercials are heavily short uh, on it, and uh, it doesn't seem likely that uh, gold can go against the commercials. It, but anyway, we had a double bottom it executed but it's fallen it's falling back down but it's still still looking like bottom action here so um, yeah, and overall that's a this uh falling wedge that it's in so that's that tells yeah it me. is but it's not very tight you, you could almost not see it mm -hmm. but, uh, so it, the tighter it is the more likely it is to have a sharp resolution but this rate it can continue down it's almost like a de declining trend channel mm -hmm. crude has been trending up since the beginning of october uh, i still think it's going to stay in this range i i don't remember i think it was today it was announced that we are now a net exporter of oil the u.s so that's that's pretty terrific. Mm -hmm. Those of us who lived through that that uh, mess in the seventies, where where the uh, uh, OPEC was was ch choking us to death. Right. I remember. Uh, I mean, I wasn't driving, obviously, but I do remember those lines. And uh, fortunately, if I recall, our license plates—one was odd and one was even. So. Oh. <laughs> So you could go on one day, then get hit the next day. <laughs> okay, now uh, bonds um, falling wedge, so they're probably going to move higher, which uh, implies that uh, maybe interest rates will be going down again. But uh, this is a bullish formation, so. Um, in, we have a PMO top here, which is bearish in the short term, and we can see it's headed down. In fact, today, it looks like we made it got a signal change. Yeah, we did. Oh, we did. Yeah, it came in. I meant to mention that. Okay, we'll have to remember to announce that in mm -hmm. time digest. Okay, now let's go over to the real excitement. <laughs> Peloton. I don't know how many of our viewers have uh, been hearing the, the <laughs> fallout on this, but they released a, a commercial, and uh, it's it's been declared sexist by the uh, social media, and it's just been all this folly roll about it. But it's uh, it's just funny to me. It's that. 
it's a $2,500 machine and higher, I'm sure. And uh, I, in order to get my blood pressure down, had to buy a stationary bike. So just to see if I would be sticking with it, I just spent 125 bucks on one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just worked out pretty well. I don't, I don't know. Isn't it uh, if you pay more though, it's more incentive to to go? Um, <laughs> talk about Peloton. Yeah, yeah. If you spend more on your your uh, machine, isn't it like, oh man, I spent all that money. I need to get on it. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Doesn't well, work for me in my gym membership, but you know. Right, and uh, of course, the threat of dying is much less than. <laughs> than yes. The money, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, looking at the the uh, chart here, Peloton uh, started out here, dropped thirty percent, and then rallied eighty percent, and now this is the little down swing from the commercial. Um, sexist commercial uh, feedback, but it's coming out of that very nicely. Should we talk about why it was, in case somebody didn't know about it, what that commercial was uh, about? Oh, it, it was it was uh, supposedly sexist. Uh, a man, a husband bought it for his wife, and uh, she's all uptight about using it. And, she doesn't look like she needs any kind of machine to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's just this. It's just silly. Anyway, the uh, uh, but the social media obviously they've got to go crazy. Of course. Right. Let's take a look at a few more that I was checking out. Um, let's go through the, the list. You know, I've never heard of this stock before. Mm -hmm. a, a Biomed. That's I've never heard of it. You know, there's a couple on here, but I picked it off the most active list this morning. Um, nothing particularly interesting here, uh, but I, what I did think was interesting is to look at the weekly chart. Mm. And here we have again, you know, my favorite thing, the parabolic up move. And actually did a double top uh, out of that. It did break the parabolic, did a double top at his at his lower. And we don't know how low it's going to go at this point. But this is where the basing pattern is. Um, just just uh, another example of uh, the kind of thing you run into when those parabolic up moves. Um, advanced micro devices uh, again, I. I'm not uh, so interested in the the uh, short term. I, I always like to look at the weekly and the monthly charts. I'm not sure what I'm going to see the monthly here. Ah, there it, there it is. So you can see this has been this route before. This is the third time to extreme high prices. And uh, um, I would say it's probably going to fizzle out here because, again, it's a very steep up move. Freeport Morin was uh, most active stock today. And uh, nice 4% uh, up move. Let's just let's go to the weekly. Nah, not too much excitement there. Yeah, PMO got above zero, but that's about it. Yeah, but this here's really, this really gives you historical context. Your major double top came down to the basing uh, area, and now uh, maybe it's going to be trending up. I don't know, but if we do have a, this is a monthly, and that's a, a PMO uh, bottom, so perhaps it's uh going higher again. But uh, when you see this happening, you just get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Macy's, uh, again, that it's one of those retailers that's uh, hitting the ice age. Let's go to the weekly again. Ooh. And, and uh, the, the monthly, you can see uh, well, 2009 was the bottom and it major up move. How many percent is that just? Yeah. A lot. Three hundred percent. So um, right now, um, maybe it's going to settle in this area and head higher. I don't know, but uh, this is this is where the, the potential bottom is at least. Mm -hmm. Three seventy five. Uh, Micron Technologies. Well, I saved the weekly chart on that. Let me just look at the daily. Okay. Hmm. Monthly. Ah, there you go. There's the 2000 blow off. Wow. And uh, didn't even approach it on the last one. I, I'm not so sure. I'm not making a prediction. I don't know where it's going to go, but it does. The context doesn't give me a good feeling from the uh, analog uh, point of view. <laughs> I think I pretty worn my welcome out on that. You want to take it over for the scooter? Yeah, I'll grab that and I'll just uh, discuss it briefly. Uh, the cool thing about it is uh, John Murphy, who is associated here, of course, with stock charts. Uh, he's really the one who came up with the uh, methodology for the rankings. Uh, again, you can find this article in a chart school, so you can just go there, type in Scooter, um, Stock Charts Technical Rank, whatever you want to do, and then you can find it. Uh, but the calculation is what I find interesting and, the, and really the reason that I like to have it on my charts, and that is you can see the weighting and what is used to determine it. Uh, the weighting I like here because it, it, it really puts all of it on the intermediate and long term. And I'm more of an intermediate trader. So 60% is long term weighted and 30% is intermediate term weighted. So you've got 90% of this calculation is intermediate to short or to long term. Your short term is only 10%. And you can see all the different uh, things that we use to calculate it. So once this is calculated uh, for a stock, it is then compared to its universe. So for example, if it's a large cap stock, uh, it's gonna be uh, compared to all of the other large caps. So in this case, a component of the S&P 500, uh, it'll compare it to all of those. So if you get all of these rate, these ranks, well, basically you get the uh, number, the calculations, and then they rank them and then it's uh, zero to 100. So you can have a 90% uh, scooter, you know, a 90 scooter, that means it's uh, doing better than 90% of its universe. So not only do you get to see the internals, but you can also look at the externals. You get the internal strength and the relative strength all on one chart. So uh, I'm gonna just pull up one really, oh, no, we gotta close it out. So anyway, if you wanna learn more about the scooter, just go and check Chart School. It's been great to have everybody. Dad, I appreciate you joining, of course. Uh, everybody, just uh, remember Mondays, 5 p.m. Eastern. Come uh, join us for our show. And the reruns are on YouTube in the Decision Point playlist on stockcharts.com. Happy trading.